Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I want to find out if we can game at 1440p on an iGPU. What we've got here is the all-new AMD Ryzen 7 8700G. This is the successor to the older 5700G, and with this, we do have RDNA 3 graphics, albeit we have seen these in mobile before, but it's the 780M clocked up, and with this setup here, I'm actually going to be doing an overclock on that GPU up to 3200 megahertz. This is a small form factor rig that I put together a couple weeks ago. We did a video on it. At the time, we actually built this with the 5600G, but obviously we need a little more power for 1440p gaming, so we are going to go with the 8700G, and even now I don't know how well it's going to handle it. But basically, this rig contains the cheapest A620 AM5 Mini ITX motherboard on the market. The case is very inexpensive over on Amazon and even cheaper on AliExpress. It's just a no-name case. A lot of people kind of rebrand these. And the power supply here is a modular, but you don't need to go with modular power supply. You only need around 200 watts maximum for this APU. But one of the most important pieces here to get that iGPU to perform well is faster RAM and actually some really tight timings on it can definitely help out if you're working with something like 6,000 megahertz. But with this setup here, we've got that Ryzen 7 8700G, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 4.2 GHz with a boost up to 5.1, that built-in Radeon 780M iGPU with 12 compute units, it is based on RDNA 3, and out of the box it clocks up to 2900 MHz, but I've done some overclocking here up to 3200 MHz, and of course, when it comes to RAM, I'm actually using some pretty decent RAM here. This is from Patriot, known as their Viper Venom Kit. It's clocked at 7400 megahertz and it is CL36. This Viper RAM does have some really tight timings and I've noticed that it works really well with these iGPUs, but I wanted a little more out of it. So I went up to 7600 mega transfers per second. I can tell you with this setup here, overclock on that iGPU and that faster memory, this thing is an awesome performer at 1080p. So with that said, we're gonna be testing it at 1440p resolutions with some AAA gaming. Now real quick, just give you a look, show you what I got going here. We are overclocked to 7600 megahertz, 32 gigs here, CL36. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M iGPU. Again, got a nice little overclock, not too much, but it's very stable here at 3200 megahertz. You can check out the timings on that RAM. Now, at the end, they're a little bit loose. I could probably tighten these up and get a little better performance out of it, but I didn't really want to worry about stability here. It's totally stable with the overclock on the iGPU. 3200 megahertz, and that 7600 mega transfers on the RAM. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some gaming. And the first one on the list, we're just going to go ahead and start out with Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, so here we are. We're at low settings. FSR is set to performance. And when I say low settings, we're at all low settings here. This is kind of the way you want to run this, even at 1080p. 1440. We'll get back into some gaming, and it's not too bad. I actually thought it would be a lot worse than this. On average, we got 59 FPS out of Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p, but I think there might be a better way to kind of run this. Right now, we've got it as low as it can go. And of course, using FSR might be cheating to some people, but you know, it's here for a reason. It really does come in handy for these iGPUs. There's no doubt that we have the resolution of the game set at 1440p, but that resolution scale with FSR is really rendering the game at a lower resolution. And I completely understand that. And going into this, I knew we weren't going to run Cyberpunk 2077 at a constant 60, 1440p on this iGPU. So what I want to do now is just see if we can get a nice steady 40 FPS out of it, medium settings. Now it would be nice to go ahead and run this at 60 or over 60 on an iGPU, 1440p, but unfortunately it's just not possible right now. Hopefully next generation, I'd say RDNA 4 or whatever they're going to be calling it, will offer much better performance. But as you can see, we just went to medium settings. We're still at 1440, and I'm gonna lock this at 40 FPS. If you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, you can see that this 8700G does pull quite a bit for a little APU. Now we're working with the desktop variant and we're up to around 85 watts with this. I've actually seen this cap out at about 120 in some cases, and that's an extreme load on the iGPU and the CPU at the same time. But we've also got that overclock going with the iGPU, which definitely helps out. So running this game at 1440p medium on an iGPU is definitely possible. 
Next up, I just ran the built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Wasn't sure how this was going to perform, but uh, at 1440p, with FSR set to performance, where at the recommended settings, we got an average of 97 FPS. Now, of course, this game will run at 1080, constantly at 60 with higher settings, but this really isn't too bad given that we don't have a dedicated GPU. I also wanted to test out at least one fighting game, so here's Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p, low settings, FSR is set to balance. Now going to performance would definitely help out, got a couple dips here and there, but if I didn't have that frame counter on right now with this game, I really wouldn't even notice it. I could definitely play through this and have a really good time at 1440p on these integrated graphics. Moving over to an older one, GTA 5, 1440p, high settings. This was pretty impressive. Now I know it's an older game, it's definitely been out for a while, but check this out. As Soon as we get in the gameplay, we're actually averaging 80 FPS with this. Another couple games that I tested here, but at a higher resolution were older Valve games and even Skyrim. OG Skyrim, 4K, high settings. It will run at a constant 60. It actually looks really good. And we're at a true 4K resolution with that. We don't have any kind of FSR or anything to add with it. Half-Life 2 and Left 4 Dead 2, you can max those out at 4K on this iGPU. So needless to say that the older games are going to run really well on this setup here. So if you've got a back catalog of older games that you wanted to play at higher resolutions, you could definitely do it on this thing. I had a good feeling that Forza Horizon 5 was going to perform really well at 1440p with no FSR. We're not using any kind of resolution scale. Medium preset with SSR quality completely off. That's one of those settings that really kills these iGPUs. I've done a lot of testing with the 780M in mobile, and that's one that I always like to disable. And now we get into some gameplay here at a true 1440p with no resolution scale, medium settings, we can actually average 89 FPS with Forza Horizon 5, which is very impressive for graphics built into the CPU. I mean, this is really awesome. I wish more games were this well optimized for iGPUs. Uh, this is one that I always like to test with the 780M and even older iGPUs because it's just one that does function really well in a lot of different systems. And going into this, I did have a good feeling we'd be able to run this at 1440p, but I suspected we'd need to add a little bit of FSR, but the only thing I had to disable was SSR quality. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, and going into this, I really did have a good feeling that it was going to run much better than it is at 1440p on this setup, just knowing how well this game is optimized. Unfortunately, at 1440p medium settings, we're under 60. Now, we could get this to run over 60 FPS at 1440p, but we have to drop the settings down to low and maybe even enable a little bit of resolution scale from within the game settings. Taking it down to about 70% at low settings will net you around 68 FPS on average. And finally, we've got Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart 1440p medium settings with FSR set to performance. Would have been really nice to get this over 60, but I'll tell you one of the best things that you can add to your inventory if you're gaming on a lower end AMD iGPU or even a lower end AMD card is a free sync monitor, a free sync display. A lot of them are really cheap over on Amazon and basically it's gonna eliminate screen tearing. Now it's not gonna make your FPS higher or anything like that, but it's just gonna smooth everything out. So you don't see all of that tearing going on when you're under that, you know, everybody wants to get locked at 60. But on a free sync display with a game like this, at, we're right at around 42 to 45 FPS, still feels very, very smooth with free sync enabled. So obviously the question is a bit loaded. Can you game at 1440p on the new 8700G's iGPU? For a lot of people, you definitely could. Now I know there's people out there that don't wanna run anything under 60 FPS, but if this is all you got and you want a higher resolution, you could definitely get by with something like this, especially if you added in a free sync display. I really do kind of stand by those with these iGPUs. I mention it all the time, and I think that's something that these handhelds powered by Ryzen need, all of them. The ROG Ally has it, and even running under 60, it just feels like a really smooth setup. 
even though we're not able to run those higher end AAA games at 1440p on this thing over 60 FPS, I think a lot of people would still be happy with something like this. But in the end, you know, if you've got the 8700G, 1080p is where it's at. I just had a few people asking about 1440p, and I figured I'd go ahead and show some games off. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this new RDNA 3i GPU, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.